Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be learning about how to code a web scraper in C Sharp. Now web scrapers are useful for all kinds of things. And in today's example, we're just going to simply pull the weather from a website. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. All right guys, what I need you to do first is go ahead and open up Visual Studio 2022, create a new project. And of course, we're going to select the C Sharp console app option here. And then we're gonna click next. We're gonna call this um, web scraper. So go ahead and click create. All right guys, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and clear out that starter code that they give you. That way we have a blank project here. And then go ahead and go up to where it says project. And then we're going to manage NuGet packages. And we need to install a new package that we're gonna to use to do this web scraping with. And what that is, is if we go to browse, we're going to start typing in HTML agility pack. It's all one word. And then, you know, let's search for a little bit in this first one here is what we need. So go ahead and click the download button. It's gonna go ahead and download that and install it to your project. So just give it a couple seconds here to do that. And once it's done, we can go back to our other program here and begin coding. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and start with our imports. So first we wanna import that um, NuGet package that we just Grab there, so we're gonna say HTML agility pack and put a semicolon. Then we're going to type in using system, and then we're going to type in using system.net.http and put a semicolon. All right, guys, those are the three things that we're gonna need here for our project. So now we can go ahead and create our namespace. So we're gonna call this namespace and then call it web scraper, and then go ahead and open up some brackets here. And then inside of this namespace thing here, we're going to type in class program, and we're going to open up more brackets. And in here, we're simply going to have a main method. That way we can just um, kind of run the program and run this. And you know, it's such easy code. We don't need to do anything crazy with classes. We could just put it all inside of this main method. So we're going to say static void main. And then in here, we're going to say string with brackets and then args, and then open up more brackets here. All right, guys, so now we have our classes and whatever set up. And now let's go ahead and talk about the use case. So if we go ahead and open up a browser, all right guys, once you have that browser open, go ahead and type in weather.com and you'll notice it pulls up the weather.com site and we're going to go ahead and use Chicago as our example here. With any web scraper, you obviously wanna to go to some page and scrape the information that you want out of it, right? Um, and you can use this for a variety of things. Maybe this is part of a larger program or maybe you're just doing it for fun. But whatever the use case is in our, scenario, we want to grab the temperature and, you know, the, the conditions. So it's cloudy and, you know, we can maybe grab like Chicago, Illinois as well. So we're just going to grab those three data points from this site here. So the first thing we want to do is grab the URL. So you'll notice at the top here, it's this long URL. So go ahead and copy that. And we're going to go back to our code here and we're going to say string URL is equal to, and then put the URL inside of quotes and then finish it off with the semicolon. All right, guys, now that we, that we have that all the way, what we're gonna do is type in var, it's short for variable, and then we're gonna say HTTP client is equal to a new HTTP client. So that's gonna create this HTTP client um, object here, assign it to our variable, and then we're going to be able to use this to browse the web via our code and tell it where to go based on this URL. So this next line here, we're gonna actually fetch the HTML, the raw HTML from the website. So we're gonna say var HTML is equal to the HTTP client. And then we're gonna call this dot get string async method here. And then what that's gonna do is go ahead and um, send a git request to whatever URL we tell it to. And the URL, obviously we've declared already. So put URL inside of these parentheses here. And then we're gonna take it one step further and we're gonna say dot result. That way we can, um, you know, do that git request. It fetches all that HTML back. And then the dot result field is the field that we're actually worried about. All right, guys, now that we have a raw HTML imported in this variable, the next thing we're gonna do is turn it into a document object. And that's just a class that we can use to um, easily sift our way throughout the HTML code um, without having to do it manually or convert to strings or, or whatever. Um, we could just simply sift through it. So what we're gonna say is var HTML document is equal to new HTML document. And then what we're gonna do is HTML document, the variable we just created, we're gonna say dot load HTML. And then we're gonna feed in our HTML that we have saved above. 
All right, guys, now that we've got that out of the way, um, we can actually start actually sifting through the data and pulling in things we want. So first, I'm just going to add some comments. We're going to say um, send get request to weather.com. And then this next part here is going to be, I think we're going to start by um, get the temperature. And then we're going to grab, I said the get the conditions. And then we're going to get the location. So we kind of laid out our project here. So let's just do one step at a time and let's start with the temperature. So what we're going to do first is create a new variable called temperature element. And it's going to point to the actual um, HTML element that the temperature thing is inside of. And the way we do that is we're going to reference our HTML document that holds all of our HTML we want. Then we're going to do dot document node. And then we're going to do dot select single node. And what that does is basically we can tell it, hey, go through the entire document and then search for this one thing that we want. All right, and now comes the part is like, you know, how do you know what to look for, right? So let's go back to our web page, and we're going to use the amazing tool that is DevTools. So we're going to hover over the temperature, click Inspect. That's going to bring up DevTools, and it's going to bring us right to the class that we're actually worried about. So you'll notice this 32 degrees um, value is stored inside of this span here. And we're going to search for it based on the class. So if you go ahead and click into this class here, click copy, we're going to look for this class name inside of our HTML document, and that should be able to give us the temperature. So how this select single node function here works is what we're going to do is put quotes, and it actually looks for an expression. So what we're going to do is two slashes here. And then we're going to say span because the degrees is, or sorry, the temperature is stored inside of a span. And then we're going to open up these square brackets here. And then we're going to do at class equals. And then inside of single quotes, we're going to paste our value that we got from DevTools and then finish it off with a semicolon. So that should go through the entire thing, find that exact class name, and then pull in, you know, that the, the HTML value, right? And then we need one more line. So we're going to say var temperature. And this is going to be the part where we actually get the value from it. So we're going to reference our temperature element. And we need to access the inner text um, value here because obviously the this temperature element here is going to be every single part of that um, element. And what I mean by that is it's not going to just be the value. It's actually going to include everything. So it's going to say span data dash test ID equals and all that stuff all the way till the end of the span. Um, obviously, we don't care about that. We only want the useful, juicy data inside of the uh, middle of the tags here. So what we need to do is just reference inner text. And we might as well do a dot trim just to make sure that it gets rid of any white space or anything. And yeah, now we have temperature stored inside of that variable. And if we want to make sure that it's working right, what we can do is console.writeline. And we're going to just say temperature, colon, space, and then a plus, and then temperature. So now let's run our program and make sure that at least getting the temperature is working right. So let's go ahead and click Run. It's going to bring up our console here. And you'll notice that once it runs, it says that the temperature is 32 degrees in Chicago. And if we go back to our browser and close DevTools, we'll notice that that is correct. It is 32 degrees, which is awesome. All right, guys, so next thing we're going to do is grab the conditions outside. And what we're looking for is it to say cloudy. So go back to our program here, make it stop running. And honestly, you can just copy this code here. And we're just going to switch a few things. So instead of temperature, we're going to say conditions. And then we're going to call this um, conditions and replace that here. And then instead of temperature element, we're going to say condition element. And obviously, the class is going to change from each element. So let's go back to our website here, hover over cloudy, and then click inspect. And you'll notice right below 32 degrees, we have this other div here with this other class name. And inside of that, it says cloudy. So this class name is what we need. So go ahead and copy that, go back to our code, and then just swap out what we have for the other one with this one. And now if we go ahead and run our program, it should say cloudy. And it looks like something's up here. So it says conditions are also 32. Um, let's see what's going on here. Oh, we're so <laughs> I'm dumb. Um, it looks like I forgot to actually reference the same element. So if you just paste that here, now we're referencing the right 
thing. So we run it more, one more time here. And we notice that it actually says that it is null. So that means something is up with how we are fetching in stuff here. And you know what that is? Instead of um, span, it should say div. Because if you notice, in DevTools here, it says div. So let's go back and switch this from spam to div. Or not spam, I meant span. And yeah, now that it's div, it should work properly. And let's go ahead and run it again. And you'll notice that right here it says temperature is 32 degrees and the conditions are cloudy, which is awesome. And now let's grab our one last data point here. And what that is is the location of the city. So if we go ahead and go to Chicago, Illinois, click hover, click inspect. And you'll notice it's inside of an H1 tag with a different class name. So let's go ahead and copy the class and go back to our code. And I'm just going to paste that real quick just to not have to go through my clipboard again. And we're going to copy this whole thing and change a few things once again. So instead of condition element, we're going to type in city element and replace that down here. And instead of conditions, we're going to do city. And city is going to be both of these as well. And then we're just going to take this line here and put it inside of these single quotes. And then make sure to switch it from div to h1 and click save. And now if we run it one more time, you'll notice that it now says the city is Chicago, Illinois. So guys, I hope you understood the basics of making a C-sharp web scraper. That's going to summarize today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. I know that I had fun. So if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.